Uh, Dick. Excuse me, Rich. Will milk be made available to us? Well, well. Here we are. What's going on in there? Hagenaga! Why is that door closed? John Hughes was not particularly charitable to public educators. Paul Gleason's character in The Breakfast Club is the principal who has not a leisure suit, but the 80s version. Does Barry Manilow know that you raid his wardrobe? One good thing about that character is that it's clear that he's in detention too. That by having to be there to discipline these kids on a Saturday, he has to be there as well. And he doesn't appear to have a lot to do at school that day either. It's a bad day for him. Paul Gleason's a good actor, and he, he could play that role without turning it into a caricature, which I think is crucial to the success of that movie. You know, even though we all watched it identifying with the kids, on some level you have to believe that the adults are real, and he's real. You know that there are people like that, and you know that they have a heart somewhere, or you can be sympathetic to them, but, um, you know, you don't want to see them caricatured. The adult characters are amazingly set up for the kids to bounce from and off of. And in Paul Gleason was the perfect character, my God, he's holding court. And then you could see the only authority this guy had was at school over these kids. And Judd was punching at it, kicking at it. Paul was a great guy to have as like an adversary. He was great. And he, and he brought so much to that as well, that looking at himself in the glass, the reflection of the uh, fire extinguisher thing, like, hey, Haganaga, as he's walking on, it's like, he's so cocky. Haganaga! Paul Gleason didn't have to ever try to be funny. He just was. I don't know who came up with that weird contraption on his desk. He's spinning something at some point. It was great. Out! Thinking of trying out for a scholarship. Give me the ball, man. He wants the ball, and what am I going to do? It's like, like I'm going to go, like, because I want to... And, I'm, and every take, I do it slightly different. And so when I rolled it to him, he booted that ball at me. I was like, yay. But I knew he was going to do that, too, and kind of hoped that he's not going to hit you. But you have to take it if he does. Let's go. Hey, come on. Hands off me. When he's having that standoff with Judd Nelson, you feel this sympathy for both of them. You know, like, you're supposed to feel, oh, the principal, he's just this jerk. But you just feel, like, what do you do with essentially a fully grown man who doesn't want to be in high school. I mean, there's real anger in Paul's character that's, that's uh, palpable. John asked me about casting, and he brought up Paul Gleason's name, and we'd both seen him in Trading Places. And there was this hilarious scene, which he called to mind, which made us both laugh, where this old lady approaches him, and he's on the payphone, and she wanted to use the payphone. And he just had this great kind of stern look that he could always, like, summon. And the lady comes up to the payphone, and he looks at her, and he goes, off and it's just like one of the funniest things ever. Unbelievable! It's like I want to have my job. It's like he, that's excellent. You know, Clarence Beeks who ends up in that monkey suit. Oh God! But Paul was a great guy. I mean, Paul is is a guy that became a friend of mine. You know, and I'd hang out with Paul and meet him for lunch, and you know, and he was like an uncle or a dad. You know, he was always that go-to guy, a really known and loved character actor. He was very much a part of the process, encouraging of all of us as young actors, and really hip and right there. God rest his soul, he was a good guy. Don't mess with the bull, young man, you'll get the horns.